Hey, Skylar here from The Mint Change You Can Wear. A while back, we made a video on a dog tag pendant made out of a silver half dollar. And a lot of you guys were wondering what a silver Morgan dollar would look like as a pendant. So I've been thinking about it for a while. And this year, the 1921 Morgan dollars turn 100, which is kind of cool. I want to make a pendant with one of those. A lot of you guys know that I like to make jewelry that has meaning to it. A couple years ago, my family went down the California coast and we went through Big Sur and spent a couple days in Big Sur. A really amazing place on Highway 1. And while we were there, we got to see a beach that had garnets in the sand. And so I got me a little bit of it, brought it home, and I want to incorporate it into this pendant today. So we're going to be making a Big Sur pendant out of a 100-year-old Morgan dollar. Should be a lot of fun, guys. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is get ourselves a center line marked down this coin. That way we can lay out the shape of the dog tag pendant. All right, so now that we have it like this, and we have it the shape we want, the back is nice and smoothed out, we need to start thinking about our design. And luckily, I've been working on that already, so I had designed this in Photoshop. I played around with a couple different sizes. I think the smallest one is gonna be the one we're gonna to have to use on this guy. So we'll cut one of those out and then get it lined up on our pendant to see how it'll look. I think that's gonna fit pretty well. We gotta make sure to leave enough room for our bale on top so we can hang the chain through it. So what we need to do now is get this ready to transfer this image. But something I just realized, Big Sur will be backwards when I do that. So what I really need to do is redesign this to have Big Sur written in reverse so that when we transfer it, it'll be written the right way. So I need to do that. And then once we have that done, we'll start transferring this image. All right, so take two. Now we have a reversed image. We have our dog tag, so it's time to transfer the image onto the dog tag. And since this is a laser jet printer, we're going to use this Krylon clear glaze to transfer the image. So we're going to spray it onto our piece, and then while it's still more or less tacky, not crazy tacky, but we're going to throw the transfer on, and anyway, you'll see from there what happens. So the first step is to spray this onto our piece. I'm going to go ahead and do that outside. All right, so I'm just going to be using one of the paver bricks out front of my shop to Make sure I'm not stinking the shop up inside. Just get it lightly coated now. All right, I should just about do it. There we go. We'll go ahead and bring that in, let it sit for a few minutes, let it tack up, and then we'll transfer the image over. Okay, so now we have this pretty much tacky, but you know, dry still and we have ourselves some nail polish remover. Pure acetone doesn't work as well, so you gotta use something like this, like nail polish remover. And what we're going to do, we're gonna transfer this over, make sure it's nice and even on there, just the way we want it, like so. Once we have it like that, get a nice rag and just daub some of the nail polish remover onto it. And we're going to wet the paper, but we don't wanna drench the paper. 
just wet it. Otherwise the whole thing falls apart. And so now that we have that, we'll take a burnishing tool like this. Pretty much anything will work as long as it's smooth. Start to burnish that image onto the metal. See, now it's looking pretty dry again. So what I need to do is just re-wet it, not to soak it. See how I'm starting to see the image come through on the back side of the paper? That's what I'm looking for. And we're just transferring that image on with the burnisher. Probably good for that side. We'll turn it around to the bottom half now. All right, that should about do it. Now, the moment of truth, we gotta get this paper off of there and see if it actually transferred. And if it didn't, you know, start over. Resand the surface and do the whole process over again and you know, eventually you'll get it. All right, let's go take it to the sink and then we'll see if we can't rub this paper off of here. We'll just wet that and then slowly start to rub the paper. As the paper starts to ball up and go away, the image should stay on the metal. All right. That worked really, really well. The image is on there and the paper is not. So now we're ready to start doing some engraving. We have it all in our GRS ball vise and I have a square graver ready to go. So we're starting engraving. Oh, I've also made some marks down here, lines for where the sand will stop. So I'll engrave that as well. Okay, so now we have the outline pretty much cut out everywhere. So now what we're gonna do is take our various size flat gravers and start to cut out the background. So like Big Sur is gonna get cut out all the inside of the tree area. Basically anything that was black in the, in the layout. And then also this area down here where we're, where we're going to be inlaying the, the sand that has to be cut out as well. That's the next step. All right guys, the engraving is pretty much finished. So I think what we need to do now, you know what we should do real quick is put a hole for our bale. Now once that's done, then we will go ahead and start to inlay some sand in there. All right, so if we're going to be drilling a hole in here for our bale, it is a good idea to have our bale first. And what we have are these scraps from cutting the sides off of the Morgan. I figured we, you know, you can go buy a bale, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but how much more fun would it be to make one out of the Morgan dollar that we cut up. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way we're gonna do that, roll it out with our Pepe Tools combination rolling mill. Still love this tool. So we'll get this thing rolled out and then we'll get our bale bent and cut up. Yeah. 
Yeah, a little over a millimeter thick, that'll be good. We'll sand off any detail that might be left on there and then we'll get a bale cut out and shaped. Actually, let's use these. Let's try the bow benders. All right, that's looking really, really good. So now what we need to do is start working on our inlay now. So once that's inlaid, then we'll do a little bit of stempling in the background of that, maybe a little antiquing, and we'll be done. All right guys, thanks for watching to the end of the video. So I'm back to working full time in my own shop and we have all kinds of really cool videos coming out here the next month or two. So make sure if you're not subscribed, make sure you do so now. Let me know if you guys have any other ideas for projects. Also, I'm always interested in what you guys think and what you guys wanna see. Make sure you check out my website, changeyoucanwear.net for all the rings and jewelry that I make. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.